What up? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And look at you. You done stumbled upon little OTB Saints, where we bring you all the latest black and gold coverage. Who are the Saints going to draft? Who's going to be their quarterback? What does the salary cap look like? All that information and more. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe. We are always, uh, we're always talking about New Orleans Duff football, right? And uh, how much I love the site. And, well, the article we're about to break down is one of the reasons why Nick Underhill and Mike Triplett have been back in their research bag. And they are trying to figure out, okay, what is so bad about the, what is so bad about the Saints offense right now? And here's the title of the piece, quote, how the Saints offense is lagging behind the NFL's top innovators in use of modern tactics. And I'm telling you, this is probably going to piss you off a little bit. Uh, the first section, Jake, is titled Play Action. As the New Orleans Saints are currently dead last in the NFL with 15 play action pass attempts on the year. 15 times on the year. And sadly enough, it's not much of a change from last year where New Orleans ranked dead last with only 86 play action attempts on the entire year. That's about five per game last time. You're about 3.75 right now. I don't understand this, um, especially because in the Drew Brees area, uh, this was not the case. So they had 86 last year. That's five a game. In 2013, Brees did 193. But from 14 to 21, the average was around 130 to 140. So it's not like Pete Carmichael hasn't made great strides in doing this before. And it's not like Derek Carr doesn't enjoy doing it. Um, in fact, uh, we're, we're, uh, Derek Carr has a 92-9 career pass rate here on play action. And the Saints just don't run it. I, yeah. I, 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 I cannot fathom why you would be dead last. So also, if you don't do play action, yes, it hurts the passing game, right? That's the obvious one. It also hurts the running game. True. What do I mean by that? It's because every time that you turn around and you're extending your arm to hand it off, well, they know you're doing what? Handing it off. And they don't think there's any threat yeah. that you're going to pull that and try to throw it down the field. So it actually hurts you in two ways, not just in the passing game, and it certainly does there because obviously the linebackers have to hold, the safety's going to have to hold their position, and that's where you create those windows, but it helps – the running back when you are running play action because then they can't hone in on every time you extend your arm, you're going to get the football. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and, and what's funny is because Nick starts this with, you know, lagging behind the top in, in modern tactics. Like, these ain't modern tactics. We're talking about running a play action pass. <laughs> Why are you running three a game? Especially when you used to have so much success, especially with Dan, what Derek Carr does well. Like, Pete Carmichael, what are you doing? Well, how about this? What if I explained to you, did you know that you can motion receivers what? before the snaps? Yes, Wait. another modern tactic. Okay. The quarterback moves his foot, <laughs> maybe gives a hand wave, and the receiver or running back can actually run. Yeah. Through, you know, you can use it for like jet sweep, like all sorts of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for the second year in a row, the New Orleans Saints are using motion less than any team in the NFL. Again, least amount of play action two years in a row, least amount of motion. Right now, they use motion on 1.4% of their dropbacks, 1% of the time. And as Nick points out, that sucks because they have a 109 quarterback rating when using motion. Uh, the Broncos, 1.8%. Okay, so as you see, uh, the Broncos are it's, it's right there. Last year... Ah, I love shifts and motions. Uh, last year, the Saints used it on 1.1% of dropbacks despite... Posting a 103 passer rating. I mean, you you watch offenses like the Eagles, the Niners, especially right, yeah. the Rams. These that's what it's all built upon. That's how they're getting all the reads. It's how they're creating the confusion. That's how they're taking advantage of their weapons. It seems like the Saints just don't give a damn about any sort of subterfuge whatsoever. They don't want to make you think it's a run into a throw. They don't want to move guys around before the snap to confuse you. This is inexplicable to me. Very rarely. Do you see San Francisco just line up? They don't line up in like two by two and doubles formation and just run a play. That's not who they are. There's a shift, there's a motion, there's a rhyme, there's a reason to everything that they do. It's an indicator. It tells everyone, especially the quarterback, what is going on with the defense because they have to. If they're playing man, well, they have to move with that shift. If they're playing zone, it's going to look a little bit different. And I always give the example whenever we were playing the Denver Broncos. We, like they they were like 
if they were playing man coverage, like it was so obvious with the shifts and movements. And then if they were playing zone, I always give the example of Champ Bailey was in front of me one time, right? And yeah. I was lined up out wide. And it's like, okay, I know Champ Bailey isn't out here <laughs> covering me in man coverage. Yes. They would not waste yes. Champ Bailey exactly. on me. So, like, that's a great indicator of, oh, this is zone. And so Philip can look at that. Okay, I know what zone that is. And all I'm going to do is run just a go route to try to run off the zone coverage there. But that's an indicator. All right. Now, if um, Williams, the linebacker, would have come out and he would have guarded me, well, look there, it's man. Or if even a safety. Like that gives you just such a great indicator. Now, I'm going to come back into the formation. Let's see who follows. Let's see who does whatever. But it gives the quarterback a cheat sheet to what the defense is doing. Uh, so no play actions, no motions. Again, the title of this article is kind of funny because they talk about modern concepts and certainly, you know, the use of motion has evolved in a modern sense, but these still feel like, you know, core elements of any great offense. And then we arrive at slants. Another, uh, interesting idea. Um, you know, one of the most unstoppable routes in all of football, especially when you have Mike Thomas, a guy who we literally called slant boy. Yeah. Had the single most dominant slant season <laughs> of all time. Why then? Why then have the Saints run just 10 slants all year long, 2.5 per game? Uh, for some reference, Mike Thomas is getting run one and a half a game right now. In 18, 18 is when he said the record or 19? Uh, 19. 19. Uh, so in 18, he ran four. In 19, he ran five per game. He's running one and a half right now. Now, Every year he's done that, he's averaged over uh, 10 yards uh, a catch when you run those routes. Derek Carr has a quarterback rating of over 100 the majority of time on those routes uh, over 90. So whatever. The, the, the point is here, what the hell is Pete Carmichael doing? That's the point. You're ignoring a lot of modern evolution of the offense. You're failing to get creative in any way. You're presenting this very bland, come-as-you-see-it sort of offense that is not taking advantage of your player's strengths. Everything we just talked about, Derek Carr is good in play action. Derek Carr is good, or the Saints are good when they use motion. Michael Thomas is good when you let him use slants. Why are you so stubborn you're still trying to run some old system that doesn't work instead of adjusting what your players needs? Like, this is the most damning article I've seen on Pete Carmichael yet. Yeah, it's just, this, this is it. Like, it's got to go. Yeah. Yeah, because all those things that you're talking about, like, those should be done in every NFL offense. Yeah. They should be done in every Maybe single last. offense. Yeah, you can't be last in those categories. And then you look at, like, the strengths that you would have in those. Like, I would love to get Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid on the move. Like, you can't, like those are two receivers that feel like they would right? thrive being on the move and terrify all defensive backs if they're on the move. Like, if I'm across the formation and all of a sudden I see number 22 motioning over and he's getting basically a running head start, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, God. I'm threatened. And so I probably try to play outside of myself and do something that's not within the play call. And then that's where you get somebody else open because I'm doing something terrified that he's going to beat me deep. Bro, like, it's just so easy. Bro, you got the Chiefs out here doing ring around the rosy that's true. before the snap. And you use motion 1% of the time? God, that's wild. You got Mike McDaniel, like Shanahan, just running Tyree Kill left, right, backwards, like all over. And what, you're using motion 1% of the time? And also, then Dennis Allen said, frickin' A, you're right, it has to get better. If you say frickin' A, I ooh. can't trust ha! you. Ooh, I don't, that's, a, that's a caution sign. <laughs> like, that's, a, like it's a, that's almost a firing on the spot. That's an Adam Gase press conference level of disturbing. Also, motion, a. motion can help you frickin in the run a game shot. as well. Mm. With a tight end, with a back, even with a receiver. Because I can start on the wing. Let's say I'm a tight end, 12 personnel. I can start on the wing. Right, and the defender can have better leverage than me, and that's why you motion, right? Your little little yo motion, fro motion, whatever you want to call it, depending on if it's the Y or the F, and then you get in better position to go inside out on a power or whatever it might be, or if I want to out leverage you on a stretch lead, like I'm using motion to benefit what I'm doing. That's why I always defend Reggie Bush's legacy so hard with the Saints because he was the ultimate decoy. Like what y'all are describing, like he was the ultimate example of that in Sean Payton's offense. And to be fair, as Nick points out in the piece, there was a time when Sean Payton was one of the guys using motion more effectively than a lot of the other people in the league were. But the rest of the league has evolved to a point where, like I mean, like we said, go watch the Dolphins, Niners, Chiefs, all these teams. 
Like you can very clearly see it where the Saints should just line it up and run it. No motion and no play action. Where's the deception come in? Like help out your O-line. Right? That, if your O-line sucks, you can't have the other team know what you're about to do. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, as hard as we've been on the offensive line, you telling me those stats, like, mm. that tells you they're not really set up to be helped. Right? Yeah. If you have something where you have a deficiency, well, do you make it harder or do you make it easier? Exactly. Or do you make exactly. it easier for them? So, uh, this is damning. You know, they yeah. got to get it fixed. And I don't know that you can just change this offense, like, a quarter, you know, a quarter of the way through the season, like you're currently in. So this more than anything else has probably brought down my expectations uh, for the saints uh, this season. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, you know, I mean, last Sunday was probably the main thing, but I don't know that I'm at 10 wins at all anymore. I don't know that I'm above seven and 10, just like last season. We'll see. I'd love to be proven wrong. I just feel a little down after reading this. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he listens to his players. I mean, the players are kind of echoing the same thing, just in media availability. Yeah. Like, if something doesn't work, scrap it. There's no need to carry this further. Yeah, true. Greg Lamont, can we hire Matt Canada here? He loves to do pre-snap motion. There's, listen, there, you know, listen. there, there is a, uh, there's a middle ground to be struck here. <laughs> no, and then, and two, there's a rhyme and a reason. Like, just motion to jet sweep is m different than motioning to a bunch or motioning away from a bunch and, that's a completely different conversation than Matt Canada. Matt Canada has his own issues right now. In fact, he's got more issues than Vogue with that offense. But did you see Chris Boswell, the kicker for the Steelers? Have y'all seen this video yet? No. Uh -uh. After one of their wins, Matt Canada is coming down from the box and he's celebrating with an offensive player, like dapping him up. And the kicker, Boswell, basically, he says, <laughs> it's not certainly not because of you or something like in those – yeah, in those what? terms, like it certainly ain't because of you. What? Yeah, and somebody called him saying, and he said it loud enough where he, he wanted said it Canada. To Canada. Yeah, we'll see if we can get the video. Bruh, I mean, that if, ain't, <laughs> if the kicker's taking shots, he, and look, he's been there a long time. He's no, really, no, no, really good, I know, but, but I'm saying, yeah. but you're dead. You're dead. Why is yeah. Tomlin stick with him? That's crazy. Wow, just amazing black and gold takes right there, Jake. I don't think I've ever heard any takes that are better than the two guys that just gave you that take. And you can keep getting them by going ahead and liking, subscribing, ringing the bell to get notifications when we post. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next OTB Saints.